visit ILMS Academy for various courses from contract drafting, RTI, labor law, GST and more. Get certified to enhance employability. Preparing citizenship, every citizen has to compulsorily abide by the norms of the constitution, statutory laws and other rules and regulations. We need not further emphasize that once the immigrants have become Indian citizens by operation of section 6A, they are regulated by the Constitution of India, the laws framed under and the values enshrined within them. Hence, the explicit lack of an oath of allegiance before the conferral of citizenship by Section 6A does not absolve the immigrants cover under this provision from following the laws of our country just as any other citizen of India. On the question of Article 14, our conclusion is as was discussed previously in paragraph 180 to 182 of the judgment, courts are generally tolerant of marginally under-inclusive legislations and recognize that similar cases may fall on both sides of the dividing line, provided that there is a broad discernible classification based on intelligible differentia. While analyzing validity under Article 14, the court has to be cognizant of the fact that any division done by a classification cannot be mathematically precise and accurate. As long as the broad purpose of the law is being fulfilled, a classification cannot be deemed unreasonable. We are thus of the considered opinion that even if there are states that could share similar characteristics with Assam, the comparison should be between two broad classes, Assam and the rest of India, rather than each individual constituent of these two classes. Since other states in general were not facing similar issues, the differentiation in classes was reasonable. On the point of manifest arbitrariness, we have divided in three parts. One is the argument was that cut-off date in section 6a uh, amounts to manifest arbitrariness. That we have not uh, been able to accept and we have held nevertheless. And as noted earlier, the determination of a cut-off date falls within the ambit of the policy makers and the court would be reluctant to impinge into such fixation, save and except when the assigned date is vitiated with discriminatory and arbitrary considerations. Since the cut-off dates in section 6a have been found not to offend the aforementioned principles, we are not inclined to interfere in the prescription of such cut-off dates. We may hasten to add here that section 6a does not operate perpetually, and since it does not rescue those immigrants who entered the state of Assam on or after 25th March 1971 and has become redundant to them, the cut-off date prescribed therein cannot be said to be tainted with the element of manifest arbitrariness. Similarly, the argument was that the procedure prescribed under 6A is also suffers with manifest arbitrariness. That also we have not agreed. From the above, it is clear that there are legible delineated conditions and a reasonable process envisaged under Section 6A and the Citizenship Rules 2009 for migrants who came before 1 1966 as well as for those who came on or after 1st January 1966 and before 25th March 1971. We have then held the above statutes for the reasons assigned in the later part supplement Section 6A and are to be read together. We are referring to the other uh, uh, the statutes covering the same field. Together to create a harmonious code, the process which runs through all of these legislations does not appear to be capricious or irrational. We cannot therefore approve the petitioner's approach of singularly reading section 6A in isolation, calling it incomplete and terming it manifestly arbitrary for not prescribing all conditions exhaustively. Then on the question of the last argument on manifest arbitration was with regard to the expression ordinary resident. The expression ordinary resident we have examined from two prongs. One, how the authorities will understood this expression and how those who are affected by the provision will understood it. So first, while examining the expression, ordinary resident from the viewpoint of the authority interpreting and applying the law, it could be observed that there is little vagueness in this term, given that this court has already dealt with the same and expected its import, particularly with the context of its uses in section 6A. We have referred the judgment in Khudiram Chakma, where this provision has been already uh, interpreted by this court. Then with regard to the second category, we have said in addition, it must also be noted that the phrase ordinary resident is used in various legislations in context not too dissimilar from section 6A. 
Besides the Indian Constitution, it finds mention in Section 5A and 10 of the Citizenship Act, in the Representation of People Act 1950, in the Life Insurance Corporation Act 1956, the Income Tax Act 1961, and the Patents Act 1970, among other statutes. Given such frequent usage, it would be difficult to term ordinary resident as vague. Then we have referred to the case law. Hence, the word ordinary resident in Assam as contained in Section 6A, Clause 2 and 3, cannot be seen to suffer from the vice of vagueness, keeping in view the fact that the judicial officials constitute the foreigners' tribunal, their orders are subject to review by superior courts, and there are civil administrative officers aiding the tribunal, all of whom are well conversant with the nuances of the procedure contemplated under Section 6A. With regard to the second prong, we have said on application of such a threshold with respect to the persons being regulated, it would be difficult to hold that such persons would be unable to understand the simpliciter, contour and indicative meaning of the phrase ordinarily resident, and would find it so vague as to be unable to the meaning of the words. This observation is further bolstered by the fact that none from the affected class of immigrants has contended before us that they found the term ordinarily resident to be vague or evasive. As regard to Article 29, we have held, we sum up our analysis of the petitioner's claim under Article 29, holding that though they have the standing to make such a claim, but on the facts of the present case, they have failed to show either an actionable impact on Assamese culture or trace the cause of it to Section 6A. On the contrary, Section 6A, when read along with the larger statutory regime surrounding citizenship and immigration, mandates timely detection and deportation of illegal immigrants, a large portion of whom entered Assam post-1971. Since seen from this perspective, it is the non-implementation of the statutory regime, which is the cause of the petitioner's concerns, their attack on the constitutionality of Section 6A is therefore misplaced. Similarly, on Article 21 also, because the arguments were same, our conclusion is that in the light of our conclusion, the preceding segments regarding Article 29, namely that the petitioners have not been able to show a constitutionally actionable impact on their communities. And if at all there is any such impact, it cannot be attributed to several factors beyond sex, uh, it, it can be attributed to several factors beyond Section 6A. The petition challenge on the ground of violation of Article 21 thus deserves to be closed at the threshold itself. With regard to Article 326, our conclusion is we are not inclined to accept the petition's contention that the influx of immigrant, immigrants in the state of Assam has affected the right of the Assamese people to vote. Moreover, there has been no violation of the right of the petitioners under Article 326 as it merely grants them the right to vote and be included in the electoral rolls, which continues to subsist to this day devoid of any interruption. As stated earlier, the petitioners have not claimed any violation of their statutory rights and have failed to demonstrate the violation of any rights under Article 326 of the Constitution. The last, uh, uh, one of the last uh, contention was with regard to the uh, conflict between 6A and provisions of the Immigration Expulsion from Assam Act 1950. That argument also didn't find favor with us. We have said, in light of the brief foregoing analysis of various statutes, we are of the considered opinion that Section 6A need not be construed in a restrictive manner to mean that a person shall be detected and deported only under the Foreigners Act 1946. If there is any other piece of legislation such as IEAA, the act which I just referred to, under which the statute, under which the status of an immigrant can be determined, we see no reason as to why such statutory detection shall not be given effect for the purpose of deportation. We thus hold that the provisions of IEAA shall also be read into Section 6A and be applied along with the Foreigners Act 1946 for the purpose of detection and deportation of foreigners. Similarly, in light of this, we find it difficult to accept the contention of the petitioners that IEAA is a complete code in dealing with the situation of immigrants in Assam and that Section 6A cannot prescribe contrary norms by granting immigrants citizenship. Since the two statutes operate in different spheres, we find no conflict existing between them. The parliament was fully conversant with the dynamics and realities while enacting both these statutes, the field of operation of the two enactments being distinct and different 
and there being a presumption of the legislature having informed knowledge about their consequences, we decline to hold that Section 6A is in conflict with a differently situated statute. Visit ILMS Academy for various courses from contract drafting, RTI, labor law, GST, and more. Get certified to enhance employability. Namely, IEAA. Instead, we are satisfied that IEAA and Section 6A can be read harmoniously along with other statutes as held in Sonoval's case. None of these statutes exist as a stand-alone code but rather supplement each other. On the question of international law violation, we have said it is not a justiciable right and our conclusion is it is well established principle that international law cannot trump domestic law. Therefore, Section 6A cannot be assailed on the ground of the perceived violation of Article 27 of the ICCPR as well. With these conclusions, we have upheld Section 6A, but then we have further said, we hold that while the statutory scheme of Section 6A is constitutionally valid, there is inadequate enforcement of the same, leading to the possibility of widespread injustice. Further, the intention of Section 6A to restrict illegal immigration post-1971 has also not been given proper effect. Accordingly, we deem it fit to issue the following directions. One, in view of the conclusion drawn in paragraph 387, it is held that Section 6 of the Citizenship Act 1955 falls within the bounds of the Constitution and is a valid piece of legislation. As a necessary corollary thereto, immigrants who entered the state of Assam prior to 1966 are deemed citizens. Two, Immigrants who entered between the cutoff dates of 1 1 1966 and 25th March 1971 can seek citizenship subject to the eligibility conditions prescribed in Section 6A. And immigrants who entered the state of Assam on or after 25th March 1971 are not entitled to the protection conferred by Section 6A and consequently they are declared to be illegal immigrants. Accordingly, Section 6A has become redundant who are those immigrants who have entered the state of Assam on or after 25th March 1971. The directions issued in Sarbananda Sonoval are required to be given effect to for the purpose of deporting the illegal immigrants falling in the category of direction B clause 3 above. Next, the provisions of the Immigrants Expulsion and Assam Act 1950 shall also be read into section 6A and shall be effectively employed for the purpose of identification of illegal immigrants. Next, the statutory machinery and tribunals tasked with the identification and detection of illegal immigrants or foreigners in Assam are inadequate and not proportionate to the requirement of giving time-bound effect to the legislative object of Section 6A read with the uh, 1950 Act, the Foreigners Act 1940, the Foreigners Tribunal Order 1964, the Passport Entry into India Act 1920, and the Passport Act 1967 and the implementation of immigration and citizenship legislations referred to above cannot be left to the mere wish and discretion of the authorities necessitating constant monitoring by this court. For this purpose, we have decided that let this matter be placed before Honorable the Chief Justice of India for constituting a bench to monitor the implementation of the directions issued here and above. The repetitions are accordingly disposed of. <coughs> I have had the benefit of reading two very erudite judgments, one penned by my Lord, the Chief Justice, the another one penned by my Lord, Justice Surya Khan. However, I have looked into the challenge to the constitutional validity of Section 6A of the Act by addressing myself on the question, I quote, whether the absence of any temporal limits in the scheme of Section 6A of the Citizenship Act has rendered the said provision manifestly arbitrary and thus violative of Article 14 of the Constitution. To put it in other words, whether the afflux of time has rendered Section 6A of the Citizenship Act temporally unreasonable and thus liable to be struck down in consequence of violation of Article 14. My line of reasoning proceeds on the footing that a piece of 
legislation may be valid at the time of enactment, but there could be a provision which by a flux of time may become temporarily unreasonable. That is how I have proceeded to express my views. I have said something about the scheme and mechanism of Section 6A. A close reading of Section 6A reveals that the benefit of citizenship to the immigrants from Bangladesh as envisaged under the Assam Accord has been conferred under the set provision in two distinct ways. First, Section 6A subsection 2 provides that persons of Indian origin who came into Assam from the territories now part of Bangladesh before 1 1 1966 and subsequent to their entry have been ordinarily resident in Assam are deemed to be citizens of India. Secondly, Section 6A subsection 3 provides that persons of Indian origin who came into Assam from the territories now part of Bangladesh on or after 1 1 1966, but before 25 3 1971, and since then have been ordinarily resident in Assam and subsequently have been detected to be a foreigner, shall be liable to have their names deleted from the electoral rolls for a period of 10 years from the date of their detection. The provision further stipulates that persons belonging to this category will be entitled to get themselves registered as citizens with the appropriate authority as per the prescribed procedure and the rules only upon detection as a foreigner and upon consequent deletion of their name from the electoral rolls. The rules for giving effect to Section 6A of the Citizenship Act were inserted in the Citizenship Rules 1956, we did the Citizenship Amendment Rules 1986, which were brought into force by the notification dated 15 January 1987. The number of immigrants belonging to the 1966-71 stream and detected as foreigner is significantly smaller in comparison to the approximate number of immigrants who had entered into Assam from Bangladesh between 1-1-1966 and 24-3-1971. This, in my considered opinion, doesn't appear to be solely due to the inadequate implementation of Section 6A, but rather due to the inherent and manifest arbitrariness in the mechanism prescribed under the provision, which I shall elaborate upon in later parts of this judgment. Then on the object sought to be achieved by the prescription of two separate cutoff dates, I shall read some portion. The cutoff date of 1 1 1966 clearly categorizes the immigrants into two discernible and determinable categories. The first category is conferred citizenship by the mechanism prescribed under section 6A subsection 2 and the second category is conferred citizenship by the procedure prescribed under Section 6A, subsection 3. Indisputably, Section 6A was enacted to give statutory effect to the political settlement arrived at in the form of Assam Accord. The Accord was a result of years of negotiation that took place between the central government, state government, AASU and AAGSP. The sui generis scheme of Section 6A also reflects this. For the issue. wide moment against illegal immigration which was led at the forefront 
by several student-run organizations. Initially, the demand of the protesting students was that the National Register of Citizens prepared in the year 1951 should act as the baseline for detection and deportation of illegal immigrants. However, during the course of negotiations, an understanding was reached 